Asinu Asiegeme is the first daughter of a family of seven children. A lawyer, convener, and founder of Lineage of Hope and Life Empowerment Initiative, where she influences women and encourages them to discover their God-ordained purpose and fulfill destiny. But Tinu's story wasn't always this rosy. My dad worked in UAC, my mom worked in NNPC, so we are very busy but well-to-do family. And I had my own fair share of pain. I just didn't know who to talk to. I was just a young girl, I was not 10. I was abused and it was all the staff in the house, the gate man, the gardener, and all of the domestic staff that my dad employed okay, to make life comfortable for us. And it just went on. How long did it go on for perhaps a year? And it didn't stop until we moved out of the house. Tinu thought she was free, but nobody knew that depression had captured her mind. I was horrible. I was vindictive. I was arrogant. I was just a bitter, wounded child. I remember many times I would stay in my room, turn off the lights and just be crying, you know? And my mom, who probably did not know how to handle life, she just thought I was weird. Many times she would say things like, this girl is an Obanji. Growing up was no fun for Tinu. She blamed herself for the abuse and would not forgive herself and her abusers for the past hurts. But one day in church, something happened. I sat back listening to this guy talk about the love of Jesus. And he kept saying things like, I don't know who God sent me to, but I know that there's someone here that's about to have their destinies changed. After a while, he just had an altar call. I came out. Something happened in me that day, and he helped me to know that there was a best friend in Jesus. Tinu learned to forgive easily and let go of all her past hurts. Some years later, she got married and had two beautiful girls. And a third child was on the way. It was going to be a boy, I knew it. And when this boy was born, he was the biggest of our kids. The rest were 3.8, 3.9. This boy was 4.2. He filled out the growth. We didn't have to roll it. It was a fantastic pregnancy from beginning to the end. I was really excited about the birth of a new gender in the family. We already had two girls and him. But they said there was a defect with his heart. He couldn't sustain his breathing himself. You know, and um, we struggled and struggled. After about 11 and a half hours, he passed on. I was shattered. I was inconsolable. I felt at the time that the enemy came to steal our praise. Friends, family, and pastors came encouraging Tinu and her husband. In one of such encouragements, particular words struck Tinu that changed her perception forever. A friend of ours said something that I would never forget. He said, God lost his only son, so he knows exactly how you feel. He said, the devil wants to steal your praise. The devil wants to steal your joy. Don't allow it. Healing really came when God said to me, the television will be your pulpit, your books will be your sons. So at that point, I embraced God and I said, if we're living like someone who is going to heaven tomorrow, would you really be concerned about this boy or no boy, girl, child thing? I said, no. So I'm contented to know that God has covered every ground. My books will be my sons and they'll speak to the enemy at their gates who shall continue, shall prolong his generation, my books will prolong my generation. It was a juncture in our lives that if we just missed that turn, we probably would be misled forever. And I stopped crying until today. Ever since then, Tinu developed the passion for helping other women. She has ministered in several churches and conferences, teaching about purpose and relationships. She says, I believe in scheduling your life to just put everything in compartment. I need to attend to my husband. I need to cook as a wife. I need to take care of my children, go through homeworks. None of this should suffer. Create memories for your children. It's not the quantity of time, it's the quality of time that you give to your children. 